this next video I'm about to play, I want you all to look extremely closely. Now, this is a self-driving car without glass. The test screen says stop, the car completely ignores him, and continues driving. And that's to be the problem. Hand gestures are extremely important, and can you even imagine a self-driving car that can't understand basic gestures? That would be terrible. The problem is there is virtually no academic research on hand gesture recognition for self-driving cars at all. And today, we're going to change that with glass. But before we do so, let's first talk about cars normally. So the average car, the average American spends an hour and 11 minutes in them every single day. In addition, there's 1.4 billion of them on this planet alone. And every single day, 165,000 of them are made. That's a lot. And finally, because of so many cars, they make up 20% of the US's total carbon emissions. Those are all very big problems. But fortunately, Stanford economist Tony Tiba has a solution. And that's that in 2030, we'll see 95% of cars that are both autonomous and electric. So what would the applications of that? What would that mean? Well, there's four implications. The first is that the entire economics of transportation will change. Transportation on roads will be 10% of what it used to be. Second, the entire economic system will change. Each family in the United States will earn $5.4 or $100 just because transportation is cheaper. Third, the entire oil industry will change. It's gonna receive one eighth the demand for oil because self-driving cars become a thing. And finally, the reductions in carbon dioxide will be 90%. Those are all extremely big things that we all need. But there's a problem, and that's that there's still challenges to self-driving cars. What are those? Thanks for asking. <laughs> now, the first is trajectory planning. And we can see right here, an example, is that the car, although it's a problem, is still able to know how to navigate on these roads and it knows how to drive safely. The second problem that we might see is night driving. And we saw in 2018 that Uber crashed and killed into a pedestrian when it was at nighttime. However, Drive AI has made a car that can now drive in the nighttime, can see cars, and can drive safely. But there's one pillar of challenges that still has not been represented and is still not up and done, and that's pedestrians. How can self-driving cars interact with pedestrians? And that's what we do with Black. That's gesture learning for autonomous driving simulator. How it works is we start with a simulation, that's the real environment, we add a self-driving car, and then we give it an algorithm which teaches it how to both recognize and then react to gestures. So we start with our simulation. This is a simulation. As you can see, it's extremely realistic. The reason for this is that one, we're able to do the entire thing in a simulation, which means we don't harm the public, and two, it still looks extremely realistic. Those are great things. Now to the simulation, we're going to add gestures to every single pedestrian. As you can see, there's go forward, there's go right, there's go left, there's stop, and there's no gesture. And the goal will be for the self-driving car to understand these gestures and react to them. Now we're going to add in the self-driving car through a package called AirSim. And what AirSim does is it adds three main sensors. The first is the LiDAR sensor. LiDAR, as you probably know, creates a 3D mapping of the surrounding environment we're gonna add the depth camera, which measures distances, and we're gonna add the R RGB camera, which is just a standard camera you see on your phone. Now, for these purposes, we're going to be using the RGB camera because it best recognizes these gestures. So now we have a car, and we now have an RGB sensor on the car that can take a video real time of what it's seeing. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take this video stream that it gets, and we're gonna add an algorithm. What's gonna happen is we first send it to the detector. And the detector is going to look at the video stream and all these frames and ask, is there a pedestrian in the video? If it says yes, there is, it's then going to just uh, uh, activate the classifier, which is going to ask, what gesture is this pedestrian playing? And then it's going to tell the car what to do. So we first start with the structure. Now, what happens is that as time passes, it's going to be getting frames. And what's going to happen is that we're going to first play every single frame on the detector. The detector is extremely lightweight which means that if it sees a pedestrian in the frame, it's going to say, okay, there's a pedestrian, and it's gonna send that frame and 40 previous frames to the classifier. The classifier takes all these frames and asks, is there a gesture in this video, and if so, what is it? However, if the detector does not recognize a pedestrian, it's not going to activate the classifier at all. So let's look carefully at each one. The first is the pedestrian detection model. We're going to take a video frame of what the car sees, we're gonna take a pedestrian, we're going to plug the pedestrian into the model and see if it can recognize the pedestrian. Uh, if it can, we crop it, and then we're gonna crop it again, so we set a very specific image from the torso up to the head. And this is basically where you see the gesture. 
Now, if the model does see a pedestrian, it's then going to send all 40 previous frames to the gesture classifier model. And what this model does, it's going to ask what is the gesture. Now how this works is we're going to, of course, use the bounding box that we got in the previous model, which crossed all the frames to look from the chest to the head, and we're gonna get all 40 of these previous frames. Once we get all these 40 frames, we're gonna do something called a temporal transform, which is where we choose 32 of those 40 frames at random. Once we have 32 of those frames, we're gonna crop them all so that they're square and 112 by 112 pixels. Now that we have 32 square images, we're gonna send them all through a 3D CNN made by Kupoku, and it's a uh, ResNet architecture, and it's going to basically going to calculate what gesture can it see throughout these 32 frames, if there is one. And it's going to classify which of these five gestures does it actually see. So let's see this happen in real life. So this is uh, going forward, we see the pedestrian is going to gesture to the car go forward, and the car is going to drive straight forward. So of course it works. It doesn't always work all the time. For example, this is a pedestrian, he's going to say go forward, and the car instead, oh, crap, <laughs> that so of course this doesn't work all the time, but we'd like it to. I want you all to pull, pull out your steering wheels on both your hands. Well, recently, I want you all to pull out your hands and pretend you're driving. Uh, and so this pedestrian is going to gesture, go right. So you all turn right. And look, the car did the same thing you did, it's smart. So this is another example. The pedestrian says, go left. And the car will go to the left. And so we can see that it works singularly for all these gestures. Now the question is, can it work for a lot of gestures? And so we're going to have this pedestrian here play a bunch of random of these five gestures and see if the car can respond. So this is at 600% speed, and we can see the car is basically going to stop when the pedestrian says stop, it's gonna go when the pedestrian says go, etc. And you can see right here the car actually stops. So now it knows how to stop. And we're not just gonna do it at 600% speed, we're gonna do it at 10,000% speed, because we do this test a lot, a lot, a lot of times. We do it actually 10,000 times, as you can see, and it takes 10 hours to test the car. And after these 10,000 tests, where we have 2,000 tests per five gestures, we see that in total, it succeeds 8,618 of the 10,000 tests, which means a total accuracy of 86.18%, which I'd say is pretty good. However, in the real life, we always don't have this perfect simulator with all these perfect gestures and all these perfect models. We have things such as gloves, where the fingers are completely covered. We have things such as where there's different skin tones, and we have to make sure that it's able to recognize all these different types of people. We have things where it's in the dark. If it's in the dark, it's harder to see your hand and it's harder to see your arm, so you have to account for that as well. And finally, we have things such as image noise, things such as blur, and we have to take all four of these things into account when we're making actual self-driving car research algorithms. Of course, the final goal is to have accuracy in all situations. We want an algorithm that works 99.99% .99 of the time so that we'll be safe when we're in that self-driving car. I want you guys all to live. So of course, that's the goal of this thing. So in conclusion, we built a virtual real-time simulator. We've put in a self-driving car and given it an algorithm that has 86.18% accuracy uh, all in five weeks. I'm sure Google can do that with you know, billions of dollars in five years uh, and have the best, better accuracy. And really the goal of this is, you know, of course, we have created basically the first simulator that helps with hand gesture recognition but we want other companies, we want other researchers to use this as motivation to continue developing these algorithms that don't have 86% accuracy, but have 99% accuracy. And we hope that when that can happen, we'll be able to make hand gesture recognition an actual very good thing. Finally, I'm sure this has all happened to you. You're at a crosswalk, you say stop to the car, the car completely ignores you, and just keeps going. Now, I want there to be a future where we don't have this problem, where we all have self-driving cars, they recognize our gestures, and everyone is happy. Uh, at the end of the day, I'd like to thank Professor Vijay Janapa Reddy, uh, John Cruz, and the entire Edge Computer Lab. Thanks for coming, Vijay. Uh, you know, both Vijay, yes, we call him by his first name, and John have been extremely helpful. Um, I'd like to thank you know, my tutors, Jessica and Gary. Thank you all very much. I'm pretty sure we sent like hundreds of emails in the last week. Uh, and all you know, the tutors, uh, Ben and Lauren, thank you, uh, as well as Emin, uh, Dr. Stillman, and all the rest of the RSI staff uh, for a wonderful experience.
so actually, uh, the question was, how can you improve accuracy? And so I want to actually go back to this table right here. And one thing you might notice is that, yes, there's 100% accuracy here. There's 98% accuracy here. But then for some reason, the stop gesture is at 61% accuracy. Like, why? Uh, and the reason actually comes to the fact that all the animations that we see the pedestrian do, I had to make myself. So I had to go in every single frame and tell the figure, OK, I want the figure here. I want this figure here. I want this figure here. And I want it to move like that, which is extremely unrealistic. And so the model that recognized gestures was trained on actual real-world animations where we had actual gestures. And so the problem is we need a way to have these pedestrians actually make real gestures. So in a perfect scenario, we could have a person actually play gestures and then have their gesture be shown in our simulation. And that, I'm sure, would increase uh, the accuracy a lot. So like, um, for every one of these simulations, right, cars stop and then we do a gesture and then the car goes. Is there any model where like, the car is moving and then while it's moving, the pedestrian does a gesture and based on that, the car stops and the gesture runs in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we didn't do it here. Yeah. But what you can do is you can basically use the same framework where you analyze the pedestrian and look at the pedestrian in every single frame. And as the car is moving, it's still able to crop out the pedestrian, yeah. see the gesture, and then react based on that. So we just did it where this car is at the stop sign at the crosswalk, but you can do it when it's moving as well. Um, how about having several pedestrians, which might give contradictory like, or just Yeah, so the question was, what if you have multiple pedestrians? Um, so for the purpose of this experiment, since you know I can't have the car do multiple things at once, what we did is that yes, it can identify multiple gestures at once and it can see multiple pedestrians, but what we did is basically took only one of the pedestrians and listened to their gesture. So if we had multiple ones, it would only listen to one. Uh, if we were to do this for multiple ones and take into account all their things, we'd have to basically do like an and type of situation where we take into account, okay, this person wants me to do this, this person wants me to do this, and what should I do based on what each person is. Can you go to your accuracy slide? Yeah. So do you, can you like speculate as to like why your like go right accuracy is like significantly higher than your like go left accuracy when they should be like symmetric? Yeah, so um, it's a similar thing to what I was telling Cynthia, um, which is that, actually I can show you an image right here. The gesture recognition algorithm that we used uh, is, is trained on images like this. So you can see that this is an actual human uh, that was you know paid to basically have a hand gesture. And as you can see in all these frames, it looks like realistic. Right? This is like an actual hand gesture. This is an actual person doing these things. But I, of course, had to make these like keyframe type animations where I have like a robotic type animation. So it's not as smooth and it's not as good looking. And so I basically took like hours and hours and hours to make sure it looks as smooth as possible. But it's not always going to be realistic. So if you ever played the Xbox, they have this thing called Xbox Connect where it tracks your movement. That would be the ideal scenario to basically have as real gestures as possible. And that would improve the accuracy. <laughs> yeah, so um, in the actual, you know, in the real world, you wouldn't just have this algorithm as the, like, master algorithm. Uh, you know, Google has a bunch of different algorithms running at once, things that are managing cars, things that are identifying the walls and buildings. And so when you actually implement this algorithm into the real world, you want to take into account all those different things that all the algorithms are saying. So for example, you could have this person saying, okay, that person's doing this, that person's doing this. But then you'd also have to have another model saying, okay, is that person looking at me? Is that person looking at me? And basically all of those features, you know, is the person staring at me or is it facing my way, then you could say, okay, I should do that. Okay, uh, going back to your model exercise here, uh, is there like any reason to actually use like rational normalization? Because I think like a lot of recent research has suggested that like it doesn't do everything and it's just like uh, too much like to like. Yeah, so um, in six weeks, uh, it's not enough time for us to code our own model and then train it. Uh, data set we used was 148,000 videos, which is a lot, a lot of training time. So what we do is we took a, you know, a pre-trained model that had already been trained, uh, already had the entire hardware structure made up, and so we basically just used that. And it had pretty good accuracy, it was like 95%, so we decided it's, you know, better, it's a save of time to just use that.
Yeah, so um, you know, we use something, basically a classifier, which is going to say, okay, out of these five classes, we think one of these classes has the best chance of happening, uh, but what a actual bar might want to do is say, okay, we're going to set a bright line, we're going to set a threshold to what we think is a safe uh, presumption of what the gesture is. For example, that could be 90%. And if the car says, okay, uh, we think that the gesture is 90% correct, then we do. But if it's 88%, let's not do it. And so if you set those type of bright lines, then you can make sure that it's pretty safe 